What's going on? I'm Sam. Today I'm at Peter's shop and I need to make this propeller fit on that motor. So now that I have the CNC mill, it should be very easy to make a prop hub adapter. There are six mounting holes that I will use to put the hub on and then six holes for the prop to go into that new hub. This spacer happens to have both hole spacings. So I'm gonna be using this to get my measurements from. So I'll be taking the prop, this plate and this screw to see if I can make a hub adapter that works. So it was pretty quick to design this part in SolidWorks. There really isn't much to it. All it is is an extruded cylinder with six counterboard holes for those Allen screws that hold it to the motor and six M6 six tapped holes that hold the prop on. So this part was ready to cut, but the CNC mill wasn't quite ready yet. We had cleaned it up, but I had never got around to adding the coolant. This coolant tank was very dirty when we first got it. So I went ahead and mixed up this alkaline cleaner. You can see it's really clean when it first went in and we had to let this cycle through the machine for about two hours and it really did its job. After about two hours, this stuff started looking really dirty as it got everything off of the machine, killed any bacteria that was hiding anywhere in it. And it was just fantastic knowing that the machine was finally done being cleaned. After this, there was nothing else that I really had to do to it. Uh, once that alkaline cleaner was ran though, I did have to empty out this coolant tank, which took a little longer than I was thinking it would. I had to tip it up on its side to try and get all of it out since it was so dirty and, and in such a bad state, I wanted to make sure everything was out. I caught all these solids with a fish filter that I put on the inlet to make sure none of those solid chunks were ran back through. And then I mixed up a 2% batch of coolant to cycle through the machine again so that the alkaline cleaner wouldn't damage anything in the machine. I let this run for about 30 minutes and after that we were good to again empty the coolant tank and mix the actual solution of coolant and once i was done with this i was so happy that i won't have to mess with coolant for a while i did use the refractometer to make sure that this was a seven percent coolant mix there's some things you have to look out for mixing coolant but this ended up being pretty straightforward so after that was done i loaded a test program into the uh, Haas control panel. I had problems getting the USB drive to work and then realized it was just too new of a USB. Switched to an old one and I was able to get this simple test program of one hole to load and it looked like it was operating correctly, which means it was time to use live tooling and see what would happen. So I put a in mill in and tried to see if this program would run correctly. This chunk of aluminum is actually one that I used on the old CNC router to try and make a prop adapter for Peter years ago. So it was really cool being able to use this piece of aluminum again for the exact same purpose. And this test program worked. It was pretty rough and I did break an end mill in it, but it was good enough to show me that at least I was transferring the files correctly and they were running. So I loaded up the actual G code of this part and I started running it. It's really cool just watching this thing work its magic. This of course is sped up quite a bit, but I've never had a CNC machine this rigid and it's really awesome being able just to tear through metal pretty quickly. The Tormach that I used wasn't quite this rigid and that CNC router I have has almost no rigidity at all. So I tried to reface this after running that part, but somehow I set that end mill just a little too low and I took off a lot more material than I expected. And that ended up causing me to actually rerun the part again, just a little bit lower so that the counter bores were deep enough for the screw heads. 
I expected to make some mistakes because this is the first part I'm running on this Haas machine. I guess the first part I'm running on a Haas in general, uh, even though the G-Code isn't much different than any other milling machine. So I re-ran it, made the holes just a tad deeper. I think I even made some of them just a little bit wider because I was having problems with the fitment of one of the screws and just kind of let the machine do its thing. And then I realized when I re-ran it, I had reordered the programs incorrectly, drove the mill in too far, and snapped it off. This is where I made another mistake. I was thinking the program was done running, though I realized the end mill broke off before it was able to get to the bottom of the park and machine out the tabs, which caused me a few problems later on. I switched to this 5 8 inch end mill to do the facing because it was one of the largest ones I had at the time before I got any face or shell mills. The automatic tool changer is awesome. Since this video, we have tooled up and now have a plethora of tool holders and tooling, which is awesome. I've had a lot of old end mills, but definitely no Cat 40 tool holders. So I went and just started milling the back of this part off pretty much just doing some facing operations at different depths until the part just kind of fell out but of course this leaves a really bad uneven finish on the part so as it sits right now the face is fine but this back face is not very good at all you can see the texture as the part started to kind of slip out from that last milling operation that's too thick by almost a quarter inch so that needs removed. There's a few ways to do this. I don't have a lathe chuck or anything like that in the mill, so I don't really have a good way to clamp it. I was thinking about putting this in the lathe just to face it off parallel, but I didn't really have any standoff blocks to keep it parallel to the jaws, so I decided not to go that route, and I decided to mill two flat spots in the manual mill. This worked pretty well though it completely destroyed the circle but I was able to get two flat spots this first one is just kind of in an arbitrary position I used the mill to mill this flat spot and once this was done I was able to put that flat spot on the jaws of the vise itself and the other side was created parallel to this side so I had two parallel flat spots that I could put in the vise and then I could mill it to its final thickness. And with just a couple passes on the mill, I was able to get this part to the thickness I wanted it. And then all that was left was to chuck it up on the lathe and get rid of some of the edge that was left from that broken end mill that never got finished. So I could have finished this part on the lathe after I thought about it. I could have made my own spacer, flipped the teeth around. There's a bunch of things I could have done, but I didn't want to rerun this part because I did make it from that leftover sheet of aluminum from the first spacer I tried to make from him. And I thought it was pretty cool being able to finally use it to make a spacer and rerunning it would have kind of ruined that uh, recycling. So now I am back at Peter's shop and I am ready to see if this hub adapter will actually work. So it looks like I got the spacing for these just a little off. I had made these holes really tight. So I ended up just going to the drill index and drilling them just a little bit bigger so that they fit into the motor with no problem at all. I then test fit the prop and everything looked good, though Peter does have to go buy some smaller bolts for those that are securing the adapter to the motor. Other than that, it looks like everything will work out fine. The next day, Peter ended up coming over needing a part for his landing gear. So I did the best I could. I needed to mill a 10 degree slope on this part I didn't have any fixtures or multi-piece vices that I could use for this. So this operation was milling that 10 degree plane in 
And then I had to flip it over. I kind of rigged up this work holding so that I could mill this hole into it. This hole had to be at that same 10 degree direction and it ended up working out pretty good. It, the work holding was really weird, but it did hold and it worked for what we needed. I had to go back and widen this hole in a couple passes because we wanted to make sure it was a snug fit for the bushing. And after the passes, that bushing fit in pretty much perfectly and he was able to install it to his plane. He also brought this spinner over. I used this parting tool trying to save time. I really shouldn't have, I should have just used my boring bar, but we were able to get that board out where he can now fit it over the hub of that prop. And now he has this cool looking spinner and everything fits together how it should. So it's like a month later, I realized I never recorded an outro for that video. I have a few other videos I've recorded in the meantime, but I have been pretty busy. So I'm sorry I haven't uploaded. Everything's been great. I have a couple videos from that Florida trip that should be going out soon. That CNC has been super awesome though i'm still chasing down a couple problems with it so there's probably going to be a couple of videos on that as well anyway thank you for watching this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and i will see you in the next one oh yeah and peter actually did fly his ultralight with this prop adapter so everything worked out great and it's awesome to know that the first part that I made on that CNC machine got used and it was a pretty essential part. The next part I made was a six-sided die, like a pair of dice type die. So not quite as important, but a lot more challenging. So I'll probably do a video on that as well.